Hey, beloved daughters, it's Danielle Kelly here. This is part two of the beautiful art of lament, emotional honesty with God in our pain. Now, in part one, I went and discussed what is lament and what are the reasons we avoid lament. And today I want to talk to you about what is the cost that we pay when we don't lament. So if you did not watch video one, go ahead over into the link below and watch video one because it'll give you a larger context of why I'm doing these videos on lament and it will set up the reasons, the importance of lamenting. Okay, so let's get into it. But before we get into it, let me pray. God, thank you so much for the women that are watching this. And I pray, God, that you would continue to move in them lamenting, that you would take them into the deepest place they've ever been in with you. And God, I know it's scary and I know it's vulnerable, but I also know that you're there. You're there with us in the lament and you do not leave us as orphans. So I pray for courage for these women to draw near to your arms, even when they don't understand, even when they, they're questioning whether you're safe. I just pray that they would take a step of faith today to lean into you and um, go into the deeps of their pain, but that they would experience you and find you. And I lift these things up to you in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So let's talk about the cost of not lamenting. So for me, one of the things that it costs me, and I'm going to give you um, four different costs that it, um, I have experienced. The first thing it's cost me is deeper intimacy with God. My refusal to fully lament put a wedge between me and the, and the one that created me. And it wasn't Jesus back in a way. It was me. God is always drawing near to us and he will not reject us at all. He just won't. Like if we come near to him, he will come to us. I believe it's in James. I'll put it on there where the Bible talks about, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And the thing about it is like, even though God was draw, even when I was refusing to draw near to him, he was coming to me. This isn't this beautiful. This, there are these cases when I think about the woman at the well where Jesus just sat right down at the well and waited for her. She wasn't even seeking him out, but he came and parked himself right where he knew her regular routine would be and waited to meet her, waited to minister to her, waited to heal her. He waited for her. And for me, I've learned that, you know, even when, I reject God's comfort. He uh, he draws near, but even with the re drawing near, I would reject his comfort. And I was in um, counseling over the sabbaticals. The, listen, I thank God for therapy because we went through a lot <laughs> of therapy. But one of the um, therapists that I had um, had said something to me that really changed the way I was looking at lament. He says that when we don't lament, we actually miss out on a specific promise from God. Jesus has a specific promise for the grieving, comfort. There is a comfort that we receive from Jesus in our lament that we don't get in other seasons. When we're on the mountaintop, Jesus is meeting us, but he meets us a different way when we're in the valley and when we're lamenting. And you might say, well, Danielle, where's that promise? The promise is in Matthew chapter five, verse four, where Jesus said it with his own words. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. When I don't lament or mourn, when you don't lament or mourn, you don't receive specific comfort from God. Right? It's crazy. You don't get the comfort you need when you don't fully lament and mourn. Mourning and lamenting are a unique invitation to receive a level of care from God that we just don't get in any other state. Okay, let's talk about the second cost of not lamenting. It impacts our relationships with others. For me, when I was refusing to lament, I was having trouble comforting my kids and parenting them. Their quote unquote big emotions started to overwhelm me. And I was teaching them the stuff, their emotions and, and, and label their emotions as wrong. 
by my response. They would have, one of my kids would have a big emotion about something and tap into their grief and start crying. And I would be like, I can't do that right now. It's too much and you need to stop it and shove it down and move on. And when I taught this at the women's event in um, October, one of the women at my table was just sharing how when she was younger, she was known as a crybaby. And I'm like, that is me. I'm still known as a crier. But when I think about what I went through as a child, when I think about being a young child whose dad just suddenly walked out on them and never gave an explanation, I'm like, oh, I can understand why I was crying because no one talked to me about why my dad abandoned me. No one sat down and allowed me to process how I was truly feeling. So my tears were the only language for my lament. And for some of us, even in our adult years, you, we could be 38, 65, 55, whatever age you are, and find yourself crying, trying to sh um, shut that down. And your body's trying to lament. Your, your body's like, I'm trying to let this out. I'm trying to um, release it. So for me, um, one of the ways not lamenting how it was costing me was just like, I couldn't show up as a good parent. I couldn't even help my kids process through their emotions because I wouldn't let God help me with my own. The other thing is I was shutting down emotionally with my husband and that was impacting our intimacy and intimacy is beyond sex. It's the emotional intimacy. Those things were being impacted in my relationship with my husband. And the other thing too, with how it was impacting my relationships is when I was not allowing myself to fully grieve and let God minister to me in my grief, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't form certain relationships for fear that I would um, lose them. I was like, nope, I don't want to, I've lost too many relationships. I'm not trying to, no, I'm not trying to develop a relationship with you because you might leave. And then I'm going to have to grieve you all over again. And, or the other thing that would happen is because I had, not lamented those past relationships and things that have happened, I would misinterpret people's um, intentions or their actions. And I would just think that people were doing stuff that they weren't doing because I had unpos unprocessed grief. Can you relate to that? The third thing that it cost me was I was developing unhealthy coping mechanisms like overeating. Okay. You know, can anybody relate to having your emotions go haywire or you're sad and you're like, I'm just going to sit here and eat some ice cream. And then you realize you didn't eat the whole gallon or pint or whatever. And maybe overeating is not your thing, but these are the some of the unhealthy co coping mechanisms that I um, started to develop because I just wouldn't lament. Overeating, overworking, just trying to overachieve. Like, I don't want to face my pain, so I'm just going to work an extra hour. I'm going to do this. Um, also being codependent and being super clingy with my safe people because I'm like, if I if I can cling to them or if I can um, draw, sometimes we can be codependent with people and expect them to be God to us when they're not as, because we're not going to God. So we're going to people to try to get them to fill a void that only God can fill. The fourth reason, um, fourth cost of not lamenting was it was wreaking havoc on my body, y'all. I was stressed out, not sleeping, having a ton of anxiety and worry from things that I wasn't grieving. And through my sabbatical, one of the blessings of the sabbatical and therapy is I went to this trauma uh, treatment in uh, Tennessee and it helped me to understand how grief impacts our body. And I'm not going to do the best job of explaining it, but like our nervous system, um, God is just amazing how he's created our nervous system. And um, we have um, uh, this part of our nervous system that gives us that, that ability to feel and joy and, and when we're in a happy place. That's one part. Then there's this other part where it's the fight or flight that's there where something happens and it's like, I'm out of here or let's come on now, bring it. Then there's the other part of our um, nervous system where we just kind of freeze and shut down and just numb out. 
And going to the trauma therapy, I realized like my grief was keeping me in a constant state or fight or flight. I wasn't able to like, cause we're our, the way that God, does, God designed our bodies is to flow in and out of those states. We're not supposed to be like parked in one. We're naturally supposed to flow in and out and like regulate. And because I wasn't processing my grief, I was, my body was not regulating at all. And one of the books that I actually read right before my trauma treatment, 24 hours beforehand, it's a new book called The Garden Within by Dr. Anita Phillips, where she talks about how God created our bodies and trauma and the impact of it. So for me, not addressing my lament, the cost of it was costing me deeper intimacy with God. It was costing, it was impacting my relationships with others. It was co creating unhealthy coping mechanisms and habits and addictions. Like, let's just be real for a moment. Like, how many people are, are in sexual addictions with pornography, masturbation, and having sex with people just to numb out because you don't want to feel the grief? How many of us are addicted to drugs? Let's just talk about that because even as Christians, we don't talk about the fact that there are people addicted to weed, even though it's legal in Illinois. Like there's people addicted to that. There's people addicted to alcohol. There's people addicted to drugs. And a lot of those addictions, yes, there's many reasons why we become addicted. But sometimes we, we might be addicted to something because something happened to us. And we're trying to numb out and we don't want to deal with the pain. We don't want to grieve what happened. So we'd rather numb out on whatever, whatever substance or numb out with this person or numb out with this food or whatever to not feel. And then the cost, it wreaks havoc on our bodies. So as I come to a close on this part two of the beautiful art of lament, I want to leave you with this question. What is the cost of your unprocessed lament? What is it costing you? How is it impacting you? How is it impacting your relationships? What is it costing you? Now, on our next video, I'm going to discuss um, the treasures that can be found in Christ when we lament. I want to end us in prayer because I just feel a sense from the Holy Spirit is like when we actually start to look at the reasons why we don't um, lament and the cost of it, um, we can feel some shame and embarrassment about that. But I want you to know that Jesus is inviting you into this journey, not to shame you, but to free you. And we can come to him with all of our stuff and know that we will be accepted, that he won't turn away from us. And that's the beauty of the cross. When Jesus died, he made a way for all to come. And we just have to accept that invitation you know, like if you're not a believer, turn away from the things that, from your sins and, and turn to Christ and accept the free gift of salvation. And for us who have been following Jesus, it's like we know that we don't, we don't have to get re-saved, but we can come boldly to his throne and find the grace and mercy that we need in our time of need, you know? So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for woo, showing me the cost and showing us the cost of not lamenting and what happens and um, how it impacts our relationship with you, with others, and even with ourselves. And I pray for each woman or man that may even be watching this, because even though this is designed for um, this message was given to women, it is a message for all people, men and women. And I just pray that um, people would be honest with you right now and about um, what it's costing them, what it, their, their, their lack of lamenting, what it has cost and what it will continue to cost them if they don't lament. Lord, I pray that you would just be a comforter to them, that as they come, that you would pour out your spirit of comfort. And I just thank you for already for the fact that you have provision for their comfort, that you're, you have been waiting with open arms to comfort each person that is filled with grief and lament. And Lord, I lift these things up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And remember, you are loved.